Okay, so learning C. Uh, I had a video like this before, and all I did was go off in random directions and was very hard to follow. So I'm going to help you guys out here and try to add some structure to this. So um, if you've never programmed before, which is what this video is intended for, uh, I'm just going to go over the basic structures of uh, C and programming at the same time. And then uh, I'm going to explain about the C data types. And most of this video is going to be talking about the, the, the data types of uh, C. Um, but really quick, let me just go over what you're looking at here. Um, first things first, you'll notice things are in different colors. That's called syntax highlighting. And that helps the programmer have a cue of what is what. Uh, when I started out, I didn't actually use any highlighting because I was in DOS. So... Uh, it's nice to have nowadays. Um, anything that starts with two slashes is regarded as a comment. It actually does not affect the program execution at all or the syntax. You can type whatever you want after a double slash and it doesn't matter. Um, this style of comment actually came from C++, the double slashes. Uh, in the original C days, you, you had to do a star slash star and a star slash to do a comment. Um, but later on, because it was so useful and such a pain to do it the other way, they backported this double slash to modern C. Um, so those are comments. Uh, a lot of people you'll find will use them to actually disable lines of code. Um, so like it would turn it off so it wouldn't run, uh, which is kind of useful in cases where you just want to like temporarily turn something off to see if it makes a difference. Um, so let me just go over the basic structure of how a program works. So typically in C, everything's about curly braces and semicolons. So when you see curly braces, you'll see an opening one and a closing one. And what that means is when a block, these are called blocks, these curly brace things, at least I call them that. Uh, when a block is executing, it will go from top to bottom, line by line, and execute statement by statement. And a statement essentially in C is anything that ends with a semicolon. Um, the most common statements are function calls like this. I'll explain functions uh, if I have time at the end of this video, if not next. Uh, so statements can be function calls, they can be assignments, they can be variable declarations, and they can be flow. Well, they can't. I I'll leave that last part out for now. Um, so as you can see, uh, there is a function. That's what these, these things are called, are functions. There's a function called main. Uh, main is the main function of the C program. And it's the first thing that's ran or called, functions are called, when the program starts. And main will execute line by line until it hits the end brace, and then the program will end. So if I hit product run here, this is a console program, and look at the output. Um, there really is no output. It tells me what the return code was, but there was none. Um, so yeah, that's a function, uh, the main function. And if you want to add anything for the program to do at the highest level, beginning to end, you got to put it in main. Anything that you put outside of main really doesn't have any bearing on the program unless you reference it or call it or use it at some point throughout main's tree of life or whatever. Um, uh, the second thing you'll notice next to comments and functions are these include lines. Um, I could spend a long time explaining exactly what these do, but as far as you guys need to know, you're basically including APIs or libraries uh, of other functions that you don't define you want to call to get your work done. Uh, in C, the most common one is the standard I.O. API, which is part of the standard library. And the reason why that's important is when, computer, when C was invented, computers started out, they were just this. They were just consoles. Can I make this text any bigger? Yes. This is how everyone used a computer. There was no mouse. There was no Windows. There was nothing. And when somebody would want to run a program, they would CD into the directory or change into the directory where the program was, which is a folder, and they would run it on the command line. And then whatever the program had to say would have to be spit out on the console. Uh, and that's what standard I.O. helps you accomplish. It helps you log or print words to the console. So I just called the function printf here. That's the second thing main does, uh, apart from calling that function above I'm about to show you. And if I rebuild this and rerun it, now you see it did say something. 
So this is output. This is how you get information to the user. Um, it's the most boring way to do it, but when you're learning C, um, it's just what you're going to do, uh, at least for the first couple hours. So um, that's function calls. It's as much as I want to go into that right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start explaining about variables and data types because you really can't do anything in C nice without um, a data type. So I want to go over the basic ones. Clearly, I hit record before I was done here. Um, So, the most common data type is int, uh, which belongs to a class of data types called the integers, which I think I left out. And essentially, you can think of an int as a number. And it's important because numbers in math are different than numbers in programming. Numbers in math can be like real or, or complex. Um, an integer really is an integer. It can only be 0, 1, 2, 3. It can't be 0 0.5. It can't be a decimal. Uh, it's discrete, meaning it's got to be a number. Um, so that's an integer. Uh, it basically can, it's one of the biggest integer types. So for example, it can store of values in a range from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. I put the exact number of possible values on the right. Um, in order to do that, it actually takes up four bytes to store uh, a single int. Um, next down the tier, you have uh, short, which is a 16-bit or two-byte integer. A short integer can only store 65,000 or 64K, um, computer science K, uh, individual values, which can go from negative 32,000 to positive 32,000. Um, when you think of 16-bit color, uh, you think of 65,000 different colors. This is why. Um, and then you have the char or, or character or whatever. Uh, most people laugh about how to pronounce this. Um, characters are really, you think of them as actual letters, but they really are just another storage type of int except or integer type. And they're one byte, and they can only store between negative 127 and positive 128, and that's 256 unique values. So if you're always wondering why you see the word 255 or 256 in computer science and programs everywhere, it's because that's the most possible combinations a single byte can have. Um, long is kind of not useful anymore because long is the same type as int when running on a 32-bit machine, maybe even a 64-bit one. Um, don't use long unless you know what you're doing. Um, there's also long long, which is insane. Um, this will actually, on modern systems, give you 8-byte integer or 64-bit. And um, I can't even list the number of combinations. It's, it's huge. It's like trillions or quintillions. It's a lot. Um, it's angry at me because I have whatever. You can't have, so variable names are unique. You can't have the same name twice. You'll get a compiler error if you do that. Um, variables can be initialized like I have up there, or they can be not initialized like these two floats down here, and then they are quote unquote assigned later uh, via another statement type called assignment, which I'll explain in just a second. Floating points are decimals. So if you need to store a decimal number, something that can actually vary, um, you would declare a float. Um, Floats, floats take up actually the same amount of storage as an int, um, but their range is much higher, and it's because it actually varies the precision based off of um, what you're trying to do. Uh, it's kind of very hard to explain how that works technology-wise. Just know if you need a decimal, you need a float. Um, doubles are the same idea, but they're twice as precise, and therefore take up twice as much storage. You almost never need to use them unless you're doing highly mathematical scientific operations. So I don't use doubles too much unless I find that I'm hitting a limited precision problem. Doubles allow you to do something like this, which probably wouldn't work too well with a float because there's just not enough uh, precision to handle something like that. So um, those are their uh, variables. Uh, like I said, you are allowed to declare a variable um, without assigning it, and then you can assign it later.
Um, going back to character real quick, I wanted to comment. The reason why they name character character is typically because you actually restore characters in them. Uh, characters, at least in the C days, were ASCII, meaning that um, there were you only only needed 256 types to store the English letters of the alphabet. Um, so you can think of characters as um, both integer types and something that can store individual letters because they're both encoded the same way. So that's kind of overwhelming uh, stuff, um, which is kind of crazy. So for now, I'm just going to say that these are your data types. They are useful to you based off of when you need to use them. For video games a lot, you'll be using a lot of integers and floats. Uh, I'm going to cover one more type, which has a more opaque type in C++ and higher languages like Objective-C, and in C it's kind of weirder, uh, and that's the string type. Um, strings typically look like this and can actually be assigned to whole phrases of characters. Um, so I know it's weird to think of it's Carry, uh, a storage data type for a string to be also car or chair, char or whatever. Um, but it's this star or asterisk that makes all the difference, and that gets into a later episode I'm going to talk about, which is pointers. Let me see how long this video has been going so far. I want to go over 10 minutes. And I have. So we only have like four minutes left, so I'm about to end. Um, so this, those are some declarations. I did leave something out. Um, all integer types, this doesn't apply to float, are by default signed. Um, unsigned is basically a way that you can unlock um, the positive range without a sign bit saying something's negative. For example, unsigned integers can go, instead of from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion, they go from 0 to 4 billion. Um, and same thing with unsigned shorts. A lot of times you'll see unsigned in, uh, char used a lot for people that want to get the value of a byte from ne not negative 127 to 128, but 0 to 255 just makes more sense. Um, I left out the names. Okay, so those are all your data types. Um, kind of useless to declare them all like this and not use any of them. So I'm going to make another function. Uh, I'll explain functions a little bit better next lesson. You can think of them as little mini programs. Functions run just like main, the whole program, beginning to end uh, until they return. Uh, void functions, which I'll go over void in just a second. Void functions return automatically. You don't have to return inside of them. Uh, when a function is done, it's, it's said it's returning back to the caller. So for example, if I want to call, do something to from the main program, main function, I call it like that. The name of it, the argument list, and the semicolon and the statement. Argument lists can be empty, which is what it looks like if they don't take any arguments or input, and the return value is often regarded as the output. Uh, void is a type that is made up for when you don't have any data, uh, meaning there's no output of the function. You can't do this, though. Um, that'll be a retardation or an error um, because you can't declare nothing. The reason why they exist for functions, on the other hand, is that functions can be declared without data types. Um, that may be confusing. So real quick before I run out of time because I can't make videos longer than 15 minutes and I have one minute left, I'm just going to show you a quick usage of int. So here's int. Two of them. I will set them equal to 2 and 5. I will add them together. There's two ways to do that. I can set equal to x, set it x equal to itself plus 5, or I can use the more common, it's called an assignment. I can use the more common plus equals operator, which is a shortcut for the exact same thing you just saw above. And dump, show them y. And that adds x to y, and then when I'm done, I can call printf, which then luckily I talked about below there, and say result is a placeholder, which I'm running out of time, won't be able to explain. D for signed, I know it doesn't make any sense, but this is basically a placeholder, and that says to print out X. And when I run the program, it's all the seven. If I run it from the car, this, it's all the seven. Ran out of time, goodbye, thanks for watching.